My name is the Governor. Uh, his delivery on anything, he's, he's probably a third of my age. You know, uh, God, the Genesis of Dream is quite good. Um, and uh, I'm going to invite him up here again, uh, and he's going to give us an absolute storm of a session. So I need my notebook up here. It is. Um, here he is, the Governor, Gelaminus. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Very good. Are you guys good? Yeah. Good to see you. <clears throat> Alright, so my name is Gediminas. Uh, those of you who don't know me, uh, me and my wife Rita, we started with a firm about six years ago. Uh, we've never done any business in our life. We never sold anything or bought anything, etc. So this was brand new for us. Uh, but we started part-time in addition to our job and bit by bit we started building our uh, home-based business and six years forward now we have a team of over 1,200 people uh, we've traveled the world we've got a car from the company and uh, a lot of what Ian was talking today sort of reminded me how we when we first started we wrote our goals and we put the pictures on the vision board etc many of those things happened already so that's quite great but today uh, we're going to talk about social media but before I start talking about Facebook and social media um, it's important to understand that this is not to replace a face-to-face -face conversation with people. Most people that we've recruited in business and most of the leaders that I have now in business, they haven't come from social media. Most of them we met face-to-face, -face. we sat down over a cup of coffee, we showed them the business, explained them how FM worked, gave them some samples to try, etc. Recruiting them into business and now they have teams of 100 people, 200 people, 300 people, etc. So, Social media is a great tool, but it's not to replace a face-to-face -face conversation. Especially for brand new people, when you recruit a brand new person, and the first people, who are they supposed to talk to? If you recruited a brand new person into the business, who are the first people they're supposed to talk to about this business? Sorry? Yeah, but then, I mean, after they've spoken to you about the business, now who are they going to share this business to? Friends and family, right? So the first people they're going to talk is friends, family, neighbors, war colleagues, basically what we call the war market, people that they already know. Now, I would strongly recommend that they speak to these people face to face, sit down with them or a cup of coffee instead of sending them a Facebook message. Because these people, they know very well, they have the trust with them, and I would really recommend to meet up face to face. However, then we, at some point, we will run out of people that we know, isn't it? The war market is only so big. You, know, you might know 100 people, 200 people, 300 people, but you're going to tell everybody about this business if you do it properly, and then that's going to finish. So you're going to have to start looking for other people to talk to, right? And some of those people you might find on social media. So this is like another strategy on top of the face-to-face -face conversations, right? So it's really, really important because some people will hear a training line and they will go, oh, that's it, I don't need to get outside. I, just, I can build the whole business online on computer. You can, but I wouldn't recommend that. It would not be as easy as you think it would be, right? But does social media work? Does Facebook work? No. Has anybody ever recruited anybody in FM business from this room on Facebook or social media? Yeah, I can see a few hands going up. No, I, it definitely works. This month, I've recruited about 60 people into FM using Facebook alone, right? So does it work? It definitely works, right? But like I say, it's not the only strategy to recruit people into the business, right? But does it work? It definitely works, right? So uh, today I'm going to give you a, a sort of an introduction. I'll give you some of the scripts I'm using and some of the tools. And I'll give you some, some concepts to understand. Because many people, they see Facebook, they see social media, they see other people doing it and they go, I need to do it. But they don't really know what to do. And sometimes they might come across really unprofessional, quite spammy, and sometimes do wrong things where it just makes other people laugh instead of them being interested in their business, if, if you know what I mean. Some of you might have seen that bad stuff out there, and so it, it makes you cringe sometimes when you see this. There's a way of, of, of going about using social media, okay? So that's really what I want to share with you today. Okay, so first of all, a few, few foundations, some, some basic knowledge to understand. So, Number one, social media is same like real world, guys. <laughs> it, the, the rules don't change when you go on Facebook, right? You, you can't start, you know, doing different stuff than you would do if you met a person on the street. 
You know, like for example, I, I don't know if you have a garden, and I've gotten plenty of it, where people would just send me the link of the company. Go, watch this link, join my team. Guess what I do when I get a message like that? Delete. Block. Not just delete the message, I block the person who sent it to me. Because it's spam. Basically, they have no respect. It seems like, imagine you walking up a, a, on a street, and somebody approaches you and says, join my business. Would you join the business? <laughs> no, you don't get away from me, right? But that's what people do online. It's the same thing. It's, there's no difference. But that's what people think. They think, oh, because it's Facebook, is different. I can now communicate with people in a different way than I communicate with real people on the street. No, that's wrong. Because most of the time, you're going to put people off if you do that. It's the same as the real world. You need to remain a human, right? There has to be some sort of a relationship uh, building going on, right? There has to be a conversation happening, not just a post or, or a, a huge, you know, message which is like, you know, 20 million words, you know, with all the links and information about your company. That's just too much for the first message, right? Have these real conversations. However, is it worth to go on Facebook? Well, I think it is. Only in UK we have 31 million users. Now, I don't know in how many people live in your area. There's definitely not 31 million people living in your area, isn't it? So this is, a, this is a resource that you can tap into. That's just UK alone. Now guess what? Our company is in how many countries? Are they over 40, right? So guess what? Most of those countries, you know, they have Facebook, right? <laughs> Again, those people we can access exist. So it's a huge user. And that's just Facebook. I mean, I'm not even having gotten in, into other social media platforms yet, right? But this is just Facebook alone. So whether it's worth it, definitely. Now... It's simple, but guess what? Not it's not easy. As it is this business, isn't it? FM or network marketing, it's not a rocket science, is it? You don't need to have five degrees in marketing to be able to do this business. But guess what? It's simple, but it's not easy. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'll just go on Facebook, I'll click two buttons, and people will flood to my website and buy stuff and join my business, etc. It's going to be, you know, so much easier than going and talking to people. Do you think that's right? No chance. I mean, I've had days this month when I recruited over 10 people in one day on Facebook, right? But guess what? I got up in the morning, I turned my computer, and I finished probably 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night. I spent the whole day on it, right? Guess what? You have to put in some work right it's not going to be any different from talking to people face to face from doing presentations to people face to face and showing them stuff right they're going to have the same questions they're going to need the same information it's going to take the same amount of time right so there's going to have to be work put in right so now some of you might go well i, I go to work i don't have the whole day to sit in front of facebook well guess what this is one of the advantages of of using social media is that it doesn't have to happen all at once I mean, you can recruit a person in an hour's time on Facebook, or you can also recruit a person in two days or three days. You can recruit a person in a week. So this conversation happening forward and backward can take shorter or longer, but you can go away from it, come back, see, oh, the person responded, let me send them the next bit of information. And this way you just keep going through that path of conversation until they reach the point where they go, okay, I've had enough information, I'm ready to join this business, what's next? Does this make sense? But that conversation has to happen. It's not going to be one click or one message and I have a new recruit. <laughs> it ain't going to happen like that. I mean, or if it's going to happen, it's going to happen very, very rarely. Most people, as usually, you know, normal people, they all have questions. They will need to learn more. They'll, they'll, they'll need to know more before they make that decision, right? Warning. <laughs> there is a warning. Take it easy, right? <laughs> Now, what do I mean by that? Anything you do on Facebook or any other social media, do it gradually. Now, I know firsthand because I've just been banned for two weeks on Facebook from posting on groups or, or writing anything on groups, right? It just finished like about a week ago, right? So for two weeks, I couldn't post anything on groups or join any new groups, etc. Why? Because I went crazy on it. I sat down and I posted in one go, I posted on about 150 groups and Facebook doesn't really like it. <laughs> so you have to be um, moderate with it, right? So, I mean, I'll tell you sort of numbers that you can do, but don't go nuts. 
right? Uh, there's a few things that, that I'll advise you to do today, but any one of those actions, you need to do it gradually. Don't try and do everything in one go, right? Because I'm like that. You know, if I do something, I like to do it proper. <laughs> but Facebook, you have to take it easy because Facebook has certain algorithms. I'm not going to get into that, but they can catch you up. So they see when a person is acting not normally, right? Because Facebook is meant for what? For friends, right? It's like, I mean, it's not meant to build business really, right? But we all use it and millions of people use it for that. But Facebook has certain things in place which prevents people from going nuts on it. Like sending a million messages in one day or posting on a million groups in one day or friending a million people in one day. It just doesn't, you know, normal people don't do that on Facebook. That's why it flags you up. So these things when you do on Facebook, just do it gradually, right? And I'll tell you certain things how you can go around it as well today. Okay, so first thing, everything on Facebook will start with Facebook profile, right? Which is your personal Facebook profile, right? So first question you need to ask yourself, would you recruit you if you had a look at your Facebook profile? Now what do I mean by that? What do you think I mean by that? What sort of stuff you post, right? And I mean, some people might disagree with me, but... Today, there is no such a thing as privacy. But privacy is gone, right? Everybody, everything is public, everything is on display, etc. Especially something like your Facebook profile, right? So the stuff you post on your Facebook, the stuff you share on your Facebook, is visible to everybody, isn't it? So even though some people might have some beliefs or some, um, some things that they, they, they think about, quite strong beliefs, but those things can put off other people, right? So one thing, number one probably and most important, is things like profanity, like the language you use. I mean, if you swear, if you post stuff that is inappropriate on your Facebook, um, whatever content it might be, like swear words or sexual nature, etc., it might put some people off because they might look at that and go, mm, do I want to be associated with a person like that? Other things is like political views. You know, they say two things you can't really... Uh, argue with people about is politics and religion. It's really, you can't argue, you know, you have your beliefs, etc. But I personally would stay away from becoming too political or too religious on my uh, Facebook. I mean, there's nothing wrong to, to, to obviously express, you know, who you are and what you believe, but sometimes we might do it over the top, right, where some people might be quite intimidated by our views and the stuff we share. So things like that. And things like picture. You know, I mean, even still, Nowadays, I go on Facebook and I see some people, they don't have a profile picture. They have a dog or a bunny or some flowers instead of the profile picture. How is it called? It's called Facebook, right? I mean, so that sort of gives you an idea that your face should be on it, right? So a person needs to communicate with the person, not with a bunny or a, or a bunch of flowers, right? If you're trying to recruit somebody on Facebook and you send them a message and they see a message from, you know, from a handbag, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to relate to you, right? So that's something to think about. You know, positive stuff. You know, join some positive groups, you know, some positive, like some positive pages where you're going to get some nice images that you can share. Stuff that will inspire people. You know, I don't know how many of you follow me on Facebook, but you can see that I put quite a lot of sort of positive, sort of no, not too much into anything. It's just really positive sort of motivational stuff. That sort of inspires people and sometimes people might go, well, I want to be associated with that person because the stuff they share, I can sort of relate to that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So the stuff you're sharing and especially, you know, your, your, your real friends on Facebook who actually know you, they're going to see that if, if you haven't been doing it and you start doing it, they'll see that positive change in you and they'll go, wow, you know, this person started sharing a lot of positive, motivational, inspirational stuff. What is happening with them? You know, they're quiet, you know. They're quite charged, you know, I, I quite like that, you know, well, well, let me find out, right? And it's just, that's what you do, because we're going to talk in a minute about attraction marketing, right? Attracting people to you rather than you reaching out to them, right? So, and, and making people curious. You know, one of the things, again, there's different beliefs in terms of people who do marketing, etc. But quite a few people that I follow, uh, their advice, and I believe that too, in, about not giving out too much information. You know, especially when it comes to posting stuff about your business or about your products, you have to keep some sort of a secrecy. Not secrecy really, but getting people curious. If you put all the information on the plate, then why would I contact you? 
because I already saw all the information. Why do I need you? If you know what I mean. Now, it's, especially it comes to promoting business. If I promote FM business and I go on Facebook and I go, join FM World UK, it's a great company, this is our official website, this is the presentation link, this is all the products and this is how much it costs to join, da 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 da, right? Now you might do a few things. One, you might go, okay, let me Google FM Cosmetics or FM World. Do you think you could Google and find some negative stuff about FM? Absolutely as about any other company, about any other person and any other product, <laughs> right? Everything has some, some positive and some negative. But most people, guess what they're looking for? They're looking for negatives instead of looking for positives, which means you just lost the control what sort of information they're going to access because you've given them the company name, now they can Google the information they want to see. If I haven't given you the company name and you ask me, what is this business, I can now send you information that I want you to see it, right? So it sort of it keeps you in control. Also, if I put all the information out, you might go, oh, get it in, as I know get it in, as he used to work in a factory a couple of years ago, right? Let me rather go and join the number one distributor in this company, right? The person who's already a leader, right? Why would I join get in, right? So this way, you basically, by giving all the information, you're losing the control. Now, will you recruit some people if you do that? Yes, you can still recruit some people, and I know people who did it. However, not as many as you could do, right, if you do it properly. So instead, I'd recommend putting something out there that will make them curious where they go, I want to find out more. Let me message Pam and find out what on earth she is doing because that is getting me curious. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah? Okay. Okay. You know, where do you work? If I go on your Facebook now and I click on About, what will I see? What does it say where you work? You know, a lot of people are in FM for six months, a year, two years, and it still doesn't say it. It says, you know, a factory or it says a company or whatever, right? Now, guess what? You are now representing your FM business, right? So it should have something on there, not necessarily FM World UK, but, I don't know, own a business, you know, or running my own business and working for whatever you, if you have a job somewhere else at the moment, it's, it's okay to keep that, but you want to add something that I'm, a, you know, I'm running my own business now or home based business. Or even you can add FM World UK or whatever, right? But this way you now representing the company, right? Or representing your business. You know, the about section. What does it say about you in your about section? You know, if you go on my about section, it says that, you know, uh, I'm in home-based business. I like helping other people uh, earn more money, you know, and run, something along those lines, right? So if somebody goes and checks me out, they go, oh, this guy teaches people about earning extra income. Now, I want some extra income. Let me talk to him more, right? But if they go on your about section and they see something completely different, they'll go, well, this person is, is advertising some sort of a business, but in the about section, it says that they are working in a car wash. You know, I, I'm not getting it. You know, how, so it has to sort of merge together, right? What is it that you do with your profile, right? Or with what you're advertising, right? And get some friends. <laughs> I mean, uh, some of you might be a Billy no mates, you know, and you don't have friends. But guess what? When I started, you know, marketing quite a lot on Facebook, I was sitting there and I was thinking, hang on a second. I have about a thousand friends on my Facebook. And out of that 1,000 friends, about 950 are in FM. So if I start advertising home-based business opportunity, I ain't going to get a lot of prospects, am I? Because all of my friends are already in FM, right? Because of my friends is Ian, Beirut, Rit, everybody who's already in FM. So I thought, I need to go out and start friending some people, right? Now guess what? Facebook allows you to get up to 5,000 friends, right? So use it. Right? Get 5,000 friends. Right? No, not in one day. <laughs> right? <laughs> but start building it up. You know when you go on Facebook, it says, do you know this person? Maybe you know this. It starts suggesting you people that you may know. Now start friending them. You know, start adding 10, 20, 30 people a day. Start friending them and start building your circle. Right? Start building your audience. Because then if you have 500 friends on Facebook and most of them are on FM and you start promoting all the FM, and guess how many prospects you're going to have? Not that many because people will like it. They'll go, oh yeah, great post, great post, pal, right? But they're not going to join your business because they're already in FM, right? But now if you add another 4,000 people on Facebook that are not in FM and that you didn't know before and now you start posting stuff on Facebook, guess what's going to happen? 
you're going to start getting some responses from your friends. They're going to go, hey, what is it that you do? Hey, I'm interested, I'm curious, etc. Now, now, there's few, again, few debates. Some people will go, oh yeah, but that means now on my personal Facebook page, I'm going to have a bunch of people that I don't really know, you know, and they're my friends, etc. Now, personally, I did it on my personal Facebook page, but you don't have to. You can create another Facebook account. You can have as many Facebook accounts as you like. <laughs> there is no limit, right? The only thing that you shouldn't do when you're creating a second Facebook account, don't do it obviously with the same email or the same telephone number, right? Because Facebook will catch you. They'll go, well, this telephone number is associated already with your main account. They're even not letting you to do it. Yeah, they won't let But, I mean, I made that mistake when I created an account. I put my same telephone number on my second account and they cashed it out and they said, oh, that's, that's not good. So just basically don't give the telephone number on your second account and use a different email, right? You can create as many emails as you like. So you can create a separate Facebook account and start building your 5,000 people audience. Once you maxed it out, guess what? You can open another account and another. You can have as many as you like. Now, all of a sudden, every day you have a reach. You can post out to 5,000 people a day, right? 5,000 people that you haven't had access to before, right? So it's gradually you can start building up audience. This is stuff, this stuff, guys, is free, right? I buy leads from other companies. I pay for leads, right? And usually a lead is anywhere from 30p a lead to maybe 50p a lead. And if it's really premium, you can even pay a pound a lead. That's basically not a person who joins your business. It's just a person who said, hey, I'm curious. I'm looking for something, right? <laughs> you don't even know if they will be interested in joining your business, right? But you already had to pay money for it. Now guess what, this month on Facebook, from the posts that I've done, I've had a response from about, I don't know, I haven't counted the, the, the actual how many responded, but probably about six, seven hundred people. Now if I was to pay money for it, it would have cost me a couple of hundred pounds. Now I just got it all for free from Facebook, right? <laughs> so is it worth doing this stuff? It, I mean, is it going to take some work? Yes, it's going to take some hours and some time to build this up. But if once you do it, it's free stuff, right? It doesn't cost you a penny. It, it takes some work, but it's free. It doesn't cost, and I, I tell you that, I recruited more people this month from the free leads I got from Facebook than from the leads I bought <laughs> from a company, right? So it's, it's really, it really definitely works. Okay, so once we've got our profile up to scratch, now we need to go on some Facebook groups. Now, why would you go on some Facebook groups, guys? What do you think? What's the point of going on Facebook groups and joining Facebook groups? Because the people need Absolutely. Yeah. And it's more people. Because I just told you that your Facebook account, what's the maximum friends you can have? 5,000. 5, what's the maximum amount of people you can have on a Facebook group? There is no limit. So you can have groups where there's 5,000 people, 10,000 people, 100,000 people, 500,000 people, right? So now, when you post something on that group, you potentially can reach 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people, right? Now, you're probably not going to reach that many, but because not that many people are checking, you know, that group every single day, but you're going to reach another lot of people that you wouldn't have reached normally, right? So, first thing, join as many groups as possible, but not on the same day, the same day yes, <laughs> right? Take it easy, do it slowly, right? So, if, you have a, if, if you're going to use your main account that you have for a while, you can join maybe 10, 20, 30 groups a day. If you're going to create a brand new Facebook account and you're going to start joining groups with that account, take it slightly easier. Do maybe 10 groups a day and gradually build it up because I created one account, a brand new account, and I joined like 50 groups in one day. Again, until 5th of September, I'm not joining any groups on that account. Right? <laughs> So take it easy, right? Do it gradually, right? So don't, don't rush this thing, right? Again, I would recommend joining groups that has at least 5,000 members or more, but you can join groups that have less members as well. It's not a problem. It's just you want to reach more people, right? There's many, many, many groups. There's millions of different groups, etc. So there's so many to choose. I'd rather choose the ones that have a lot of people on them, right? And post to about 30 to 50 groups every day. So if you're using your old account that you, be, you had for years, it's, Facebook will be a little bit easier on you. If you're using a brand new account, you have to take it easy, right? So if you're using a brand new account, I wouldn't do more than 30 groups a day. If you're using your main account that you've had for a long time, then you can do up to about 50 groups a day, etc. 
Again, one thing you'll notice if you're doing too much of something, can anybody tell what happens if you're doing too much of something on Facebook? How is Facebook going to let you know that you're starting to do a bit too much of it? Now, they're not going to block you right away. What's going to happen, they're going to pop this table out with loads of little pictures and they'll say, select all the pictures with a tiger. Have anybody had that before on Facebook? Yeah. Have you had that before? Yeah? So that's what's going to happen. So once you see that, you know you need to take it easy. <laughs> right? So they'll pop that up, say, select all the pictures with wristwatch. Basically, they, they, they're checking if you're not a robot because people have some systems that they put and they just do it on autopilot, right? So they're checking you out. But it, once you have that, you know that now you're doing a bit too much of it, right? And there's, there's lots of things you can So just then, you know, take it easy for the day, wait, another day, etc. So like posting to groups, for example, you, if, if you get that a lot, then you might want to post one, every two days instead of doing it every day, right? So it gives a bit of a gap where, and, and you might want to spread it out. So do maybe five groups in the morning, five groups in the afternoon, five groups in the evening. This way it's not all in one go, right? Does this make sense so far, guys? Yeah? Okay, good. Okay, yeah, so like morning, afternoon, evening, you know, and don't post like in the middle of the night, you know, because again, think about when are people online, when are they going to see, because if you post something at 2 o'clock in the morning on the group, you know, and you spend hours on that, who's going to see that, you know, I'm sleeping at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, and most people do, so you're not going to reach as many people as if you would post during daytime, right? Okay, again, like I said, it's peaking interest, it's not recruiting. You're not recruiting with the post you're putting on, on Facebook group. If you already put enough information to recruit person on that Facebook post, you put too much. <laughs> what are you doing? You're just peaking interest. You're getting people curious. You want people to reach out to you, right? That's really what you want to do. You're doing attraction marketing. So the stuff you're posting, you want them to go, Oh, I'm interested about that. Let me message this person. That's what really you want to do. You want, exactly the same way how when you talk to people in the real world. The reason that so many people um, are scared of rejection when they speak to people on the street or in restaurants, etc. is because they give too much information. You can only be rejected if you gave too much information to somebody. If I approach somebody like Luda and I said, Hey Luda, if there was a way to make some extra uh, money in addition to your job, would you be interested? Does she know what company I'm with? No. Not really? Does she know what business is about? What the, uh, she, does, she knows nothing, right? So can she reject my company or my business? Not really. She can either just go, yeah, I would be interested, or no, I'm not. If she says yes, guess what? She just messaged me on Facebook. <laughs> right? Now I can give her a little bit of information, she digests that and then she can go, I want more or I'm not interested, right? And this is how we do it, exactly the same way we do it on Facebook. We're building that relationship up with the person, right? And engage the post. Now, one of the things I think I've, I've stumbled by mistake, <laughs> and it actually works quite well, is actually engaging with the post. So, when you're going to post something on Facebook, and I'll share with you the messages, the sort of messages that I use. But when you post something on Facebook, I usually put in the message, I put message me privately if you're interested, right? Because why would I do that, guys? Because you're not going back to the post to check that someone commented or something. I'm still going to have to go there. <laughs> but yes, the, that's the idea. And also, if you're not in my friends on Facebook, can I message you? Yeah. I yes. can, but you're never going to see that message. Yeah. Because most people don't know that on your Facebook, you have the other messages folder. Now for some of you, if you go in there, you're going to find like a million messages that you never knew existed, right? Because there's another folder where all the messages goes from people who are not your Facebook friends. But most people don't even know that folder exists, <laughs> let alone check it every single day. So if I message those people with information, they will never read it. So instead, I want them to message me. And guess where their message is going to go? their message is going to go into my other folder. But unlike millions of people on Facebook, I do check my other messages folder and I will respond to them, right? So this way I want them to reach out to me because if I message them, very often I get people going, I didn't receive anything, you know, right? And so that's it. But once they message you, is all people going to message you? No. Now, some of them are still not going to message you. What they're going to do instead, under your post, they're going to write interested or more info or message me or whatever, right? 
So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this post and I'm going to engage it. Now the way that Facebook shows stuff on Facebook, they show it by engagement. The more people interact with, with a picture or a, with a video or whatever, the more Facebook is going to show it to other people, right? So it's the same like with anything. If you post a picture on Facebook that is boring and nobody likes and nobody engages, very quickly Facebook is going to take it out from the from the flow of information and your friends are not going to see it. But if you put something that is really, really engaging and a lot of people start liking it and sharing it and commenting on it, guess what's going to happen? That thing is going to go to the very top of the, of the feed. So I go on my Facebook and boom, the first thing I'm going to see is your post because it's so engaging, right? Does this make sense? Yeah? So same in the groups. In the groups, there's a constant flow of stuff. People putting stuff, selling, buying and things like that, right? So when your post gets interacted with more, then it will show to more people in that group. So the way to do it, one of the ways to do it is obviously to have a good post to begin with, that people actually notice it, right? And I'll show you an example later on. But also, when people comment something on my post on a group, I'll go back and first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to like their comment, and then I'm going to respond to their comment. So I'm going to comment to their comment, right? So I'm going to go, if Pam commented on my post, hey, you know, tech, send me some info, I'll go like and comment, I'm going to tag Pam, <laughs> so I'm going to go Pam Stevens, so she, you, are ta you, you, you know what I'm saying, right? I'm not just writing her name, I'm tagging her in the response, and I'm going to say, I've sent you a private message, right? Enter, right? So now, boom, there's two interactions. Facebook doesn't know that I went and commented. All they care is two comments now on the post. Somebody else commented, I go like, I've sent you a personal message. Somebody else comes, and this way it just becomes more and more and more. Rita seen some of the <laughs> posts I show her on my life. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. I had like some of the posts I had two, three hundred comments on the post, right? So it shows for days after. Like I put the post and five days later people are still sending me messages and commenting from that post. Because it was so engaging. Facebook keeps showing it to other people, right? So it's all a bit of a science, and I mean, I'm no, no specialist of Facebook, but it's just like, I stumbled across this, and I realized that it actually works quite well, because a lot of people get engaged when there's a lot of comments underneath, right? So that's what I'm doing. Now, I must admit, lately I got a bit lazy, because like, <laughs> we're getting so much response, I only started responding to the messages I'm receiving, so I have to go back and again comment because I have a few posts now where there's about 100 people saying I'm interested but I haven't even commented yet, right? Because it gets a lot. I mean, if you start working with one or two accounts, it can get a lot. Like, about two days ago or three yeah, days ago. I want to say because like, yeah, you can make a lot, but I got like just mine and sometimes I have no time to respond to all of them. So exactly, exactly. So, so it definitely works and it can get you, you know. But one of the best things about Facebook is that, you see, or social media, is that, you know, you can talk to people live, face to face, go recruit them in a cafe, meet your friends, etc. But can you do it at 10 o'clock at night? No. No, the cafe is closed, your friends are sleeping, right? But guess what? Facebook is never sleeping, right? So even if somebody has a full-time job and they go, oh, well, I have no time to go to, you know, hotel meetings and to go to meet people, all right, but you have time on Facebook. You know, you can come home, have your dinner, and sit for an hour or so and post stuff on Facebook, can't you? Right? So it takes away that, oh, I don't have it. You can do it at 6 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning. You can do it at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. You can message people at any time or respond to their messages, right? So it just gives you another platform to, to, to talk to people and to engage, etc. So that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff that can be done. So this is groups. Okay. The next thing I wanted to talk to is Facebook pages, right? So again, um, when you first have your Facebook account, your Facebook profile, right, and you create a Facebook page, where are you going to get more response to your posts and stuff like that? Where do you think you're going to get more response? When you post something on your personal profile, on your Facebook page? I think on personal. On personal. Without a doubt, to begin with, you're always going to get more response on your personal page. And a lot of people get discouraged because of that. They, they, you know, they had the personal profile, now created the page, they put something nice on it, and it's like, you know, those bushes that go, you know, on, on, on a desert, you know, nothing is happening, right? Nobody's commenting, nobody's liking. It's going to happen, right? Because it's a brand new page. But over time, if you build it up, like we said, 
How many friends you can have? 5,000. How many people can you have to like your page? No, I think no limit. Millions, right? There's no limit, right? So over time, if you keep investing time into building up your page, your page will overtake your personal profile. But to begin with, sometimes people go, oh, you know, if I put something on, on my personal, it gets a lot more response, so there's no point of putting stuff on Facebook page. That's a mistake. You want to keep building it up. But the hardest bit is the beginning, because in the beginning, when you only have a couple of people who like your page, it's quite slow. But once you get a lot of people liking your page, then you're going to get a lot more response, right? And we'll talk about how to build it up. So, First of all, create a page, right? If you haven't got one, you can create a page. Now, I personally see these two types of pages you might want to create on, on, on Facebook. One type of page you might want to create is your business page. Well, you're going to be promoting the business opportunity, right? With, for people, etc. And you might be putting stuff that will get people curious, etc. The other type of page I would do is a product page. Now, I wouldn't mix the two though, right? I wouldn't do one page and put everything there, products, business opportunity, recruiting, selling, it just gets a bit too much, right? And you might be getting diff wrong audience for the wrong thing, right? Because th there's people who don't care about earning extra income, but they might just want to buy some good quality makeup. But then there's other people who can't afford to buy products, but they would really like to earn some extra income, right? So you might want to separate the two if, if you can. Right? And yeah, again, you can have as many pages as you like on Facebook. So if you did one, it didn't work out, just delete it or just leave it, create another one. You can do as many as you like, so it's okay. So first of all, get some likes on the Facebook page. And the easiest way to get likes on your Facebook page is to invite all of your friends to like your page, right? So again, we're going back to get some friends. If you have 200 friends on your Facebook and you ask them to like your page, so maximum, you're going to have 200 likes on your Facebook page, right? And the chances are all of your friends are not going to like your page, right? So if you add more people on your Facebook account, then there's more people to invite to like your page. If you create a second account on Facebook and get another 5,000 friends and invite all of those 5,000 friends to like your page, that's another 5,000 people who put in. So this way you can start building up your Facebook page. Because page will give you some advantages over the Facebook profile. For example, one of the huge advantages of Facebook page is that you can schedule posts. On your normal Facebook profile, you can only post now, right? So if you want to do six posts in a day, you have to go on Facebook six times a day and post a picture or post a video. But on your page, you can create a post, like a picture with some motivational stuff, and then go schedule for 6 p.m. tonight. Another one, schedule for 9 p.m. tonight. So this way, you don't have to spend the whole bloody day on Facebook, and it just does it by itself, right? It keeps posting by itself, right? But people don't, don't know any different, right? It just will come as if you just sat down there and posted the stuff, right? And there's the other stuff that Facebook page, for example, on page, you have analytics, or it's called insights. So you can actually go on your Facebook page on Insights and see how many women and men are liking stuff, what's the age range, what's, who is clicking on what, etc. So you have a lot more control to see what sort of stuff I'm sharing actually is working, what sort of stuff I'm sharing actually nobody cares about. And this way you can start improving on yourself and, and create better sort of marketing that you do. Again, I'd recommend five to six posts a day on Facebook page. If you're posting one, once a day, you're missing out on like 90% of your audience because not everybody's on Facebook at the same all the time, isn't it? So if you're spreading out your posts, this way you're going to catch people at different times of the day. So you want to spread your posts out and not do them all in one go. Now, out of those five to six posts, three to four should be what we call relationship building posts or stuff that basically you're not selling anything. It's just something motivational, inspirational, or it's funny, or it's, you know, whatever. It's a it's video that makes you cry, or whatever, right? It's stuff that you're not actually trying to sell anything with that post, but what you're trying to do is get shares. Why is share is important, guys? It gives you reach. Right? You're reaching out to other people who you wouldn't have reached potentially. Let's say Pam likes my page. It's great. But if Pam shares my post, now 5,000 of her friends just saw my post, right? So you really want to get, you want to post stuff that's going to drive people to go, I want to share that. 
right? Where they're going to go, wow, this is cool. I want to share that, you know, because I want people to see that I like this stuff, right? So that's why, again, the way you create your posts, you don't want to, to give too much information. Because if you went on your post and you put something really good motivational, but then you put 27 links of your company on it, am I going to share it? Probably not, right? But if you just put something really motivational on your Facebook page, I might share it because it just has Ian the business, right? But it doesn't have all the bloody links to his, you know, website, right? So this, but now my friend sees that and they go, oh, Ian the business is sharing some cool stuff. Let me go to see what's the Ian the business, right? And this is how you can start reaching out and those people can like your page and you can sort of start building on that. So for three to four, more than half of your post should be nothing to do with your business, right? The other two or three will be what we call sales or recruitment posts, right? So if it's your product page, you're going to be putting out a product with a price and things like that that they can go and message you and go, oh, I want one of those drink cleaners or whatever, right? Or if it's a business page, then you might have something where you go, I'm recruiting or, you know, would you like to earn some extra income or whatever. Something that you want them to act on it, right? And when you're putting a sales or, or recruitment post, it should have few items in it. First of all, it should have like a heading. So the beginning of the post is the first line they're going to see should have something that attracts them, right? So like want to make extra income or whatever, something maybe even in, in, in capital letters, etc. Then, then you can use maybe, I don't know, 20, 30, 100 words to describe what it is, right? So you might have some description there. And then lastly, when you're finishing the test text on your sales post or recruiter post, is a call to action. So you want to tell them what to do. Many people don't do that and they expect them to figure out what to do. <laughs> They're not going to figure out anything. You know, pardon, the pardon me saying that, but most people are lazy. They don't want to do anything unless you tell them to do it, right? So at the end of your post, you should say, click on this link or go to this page or message me privately now. Or whatever. You're telling them what to do after seeing that, right? And then they can reach out to you or do whatever you tell them to do, right? Now this is my comes to some of you as a shock. If you want to do really, really well on Facebook nowadays, is you want to put a lot of video content on, on your Facebook. The reason for that is Facebook is now competing with YouTube, right? Facebook is trying to compete with YouTube and that's why they want the video to be, to be put on Facebook instead of on YouTube, right? So for example, if you created a video, instead of uploading the video on YouTube and sharing a YouTube link on Facebook, which Facebook doesn't like, because that means if a person clicks on it, where are they going to go? To YouTube. to YouTube. So they're leaving Facebook. So they don't like that, right? Instead, you want to upload the video directly onto Facebook. Facebook likes that because they go, great, people are going to stay on Facebook and they're going to engage with it. So they're going to show it more than maybe some other content, etc. So you want to create as many videos or, or share as many, even if you haven't created the video, you can share it on your Facebook. It, Etc. And it works really, really well on Facebook. So, one more question. Uh -huh. So, for example, I made a video on my phone, yeah, and I go from the YouTube channel to, with the, from the YouTube, uh, from not YouTube, from Facebook, no? Yeah. Because and you just upload it. what I do it. at the moment, I do in the fa first up upload in uh, YouTube, and then I share it from the Facebook and whatever. Facebook. Exactly. So, do it both. Personally, I still gonna upload on my YouTube channel because I have a, a YouTube channel with hundreds of subscribers and people watch the stuff there. But I'm not gonna share the link from YouTube on Facebook. I'm gonna upload the same video on my Facebook page. And those of you who follow my Facebook page, you see that I upload video directly on there and I stalk there. Essentially, it's the same video, but I do it there. And like I said, you can share it. Now, something that Facebook brought out recently is live broadcast. You saw Ian today doing a live broadcast, right? He went on his phone, clicked live, and he filmed you guys, etc., and it was streamed live. So instead of recording a video and then uploading it onto Facebook, this is actually live, right? And this will actually get even more views than a video you recorded and then uploaded to your uh, Facebook because this is basically live and Facebook really likes that, right? So people, a lot more people are going to see that video uh, and engage with it, etc. So again, 
do live broadcasts, right? I mean, a lot of people are scared of, of filming themselves and, and, and going, you know, on, especially on live. You know, if they can record on the phone and edit it 20 million times, then they're okay with it. But if they have to go live, they're a bit scared. But to be honest with you, how to say it nicely? <laughs> uh, a, a lot of people, they're worried about what other people think of them, right? But if you actually knew how little other people thought of you, then you'd really be offended, right? So most people don't really care, right? I mean, what you're going to say, whether you say right or maybe you've made a group or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You need to start somewhere. Any one of these pro video guys now that like, you know, Eric Warriors and all these people that we share, if you go on their YouTube channel and scroll back six, seven, eight years ago when those guys started doing videos, you'd be rolling on the floor holding your stomach, you know, the, the beginning of the videos were horrible, I mean, bad, I mean, very bad, right, I mean, there's a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, he's now like a god of social media and everybody listens to him, etc. He started the wine library, uh, uh, a channel where he was talking about wine, wines, right, people drinking wines and buying wines, if you go back on his channel and see some of his first videos, they were incredibly bad, the guy has built 100 million dollar business out of those videos, right? So nobody, I mean, it has to start somewhere. And your first couple of videos, they will be bad. It doesn't matter. Start producing them. Content on internet is, is what they call virtual real estate. It's like once you built it, it's there forever. If I record a video and I put it on Facebook or I put it on YouTube, it is there forever, right? So people can see it today, next week, next year, years and years from now, right? So if it's a recruitment video, it's doing the work for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? I mean, and the more of them you put out there, the more people will stumble upon them, see them, respond back to you, etc. So it's huge, but too many people are not using. And the reason why live broadcast, especially now it's so good, guess why it's so good now? Anybody? Is it you? Nobody uses it. <laughs> it's brand new and most people are scared to use it. So out of the 31 million people in UK who have a Facebook account, probably a percent, probably less than a percent will actually ever do a live broadcast. So if you do one, you're gonna stand out from the crowd, right? Like out of millions of pages that are created, probably most people never do a video, right? And you can do the live broadcast on your personal um, Facebook profile, but you can also do a live broadcast on your Facebook page, right? So this way you're gonna get, uh, gonna again reach out to people. And again, it doesn't have to be you filming you. You might do a drain cleaner experiment, right, with the hot water and the granules, and you film that on a live broadcast, right? Or you, I don't know, doing a party or something, just film stuff, right, and put it out there. It's gonna work, and you'll see the return, right? Okay. So what to post? Well, one of the posts I've posted, and some of you say, who's seen this post? Okay, so few of you have seen this post, right? I posted it a lot, right? Why did I post it a lot of it? Because it worked, right? Now, did I knew it's going to work? <laughs> no. I found the template, I, 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 I just put the text that I wanted, and I put it out there. And maybe because of the colors, maybe it's because it's quite bright and it stands out from the from the stuff on the face, it worked really, really well. I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses on this post. And I've made it into a Lithuanian language, and guess what? I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other responses from Lithuanian um, community, etc. And I did other similar sort of posts, again, which are quite bright, quite colorful, and stands out. Because if you do something that is dull and really just drowns in the flood of information, nobody's going to notice it, right? So you really want to stand out, right? And something like that really worked very well. Now it's quite simple. It says, would you like to earn a thousand pounds extra? Message me for details, right? Now I wouldn't put it like that on its own. Then I put a bit of text at the top, right? So what I put at the top with this particular one, I said, I'm looking for three serious people who would like to earn an extra income of £1,000 per month before the end of October. If you're prepared to invest a few hours a day over the next three months to develop this uh, type of monthly income, message me for details. Now, anybody can pick up something out of that. I mean, any ideas that you get when you read this? Anything that you notice? Anything that you can go, ooh, aha, you know, any aha moments, yeah? 
Yeah. Well, that's what it implies. In three months, it, it, it implies to develop it in three months' time. Yeah. So it, it, it does imply that. Yeah. So the idea is, the idea is that um, FM has uh, announced this incentive, right? Have, have you guys seen that they plant the yeah. the seed and grow a tree, or other way around, <laughs> right? Have you seen that incentive, right? So it was basically where you grab a brand new person. You develop them to 15% level, you get 800 pounds commission, right? A bonus for developing that person. If you recruit somebody brand new and you develop them to, until October to 21 uh, to 18%, you get a thousand pounds commission. And if you recruit somebody new today and and develop them to 21% level by October and they keep it in November December, you get a luxury holiday for two, right? Yeah. Now, if that person did 18% level, how, what sort of commission would they be looking at? Anybody? Well, usually probably a bit less. Probably they would be looking at about five, six hundred pounds commission. Yeah, However, yeah. we now have what program running? Double. Double commission. So if I recruit a brand new person now and I teach them to build it on six legs, if they build the 18% level on six legs, then they're going to get, instead of 500 pounds, they're going to get a thousand pounds commission, right? So the, to reach a thousand pounds a month is definitely possible. Now again, it's simple, but it's not easy. easy. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking for serious people who are prepared to put in few hours every single day for the next three months to develop that income, right? I want to preempt that. So when people are going to message me, and I have a few people who challenge me, and they go, oh, you know, I know FM, you can't make a thousand pounds in three months. I go, really? <laughs> Let's talk, right? Because I know you can. I mean, it's going to be easy. No, you know, but you, you know, it's possible, definitely. So that's why I'm saying, you know, and if somebody starts talking to me, saying, oh, you know, this is blah, blah, blah. I go, look, I'm looking for free, serious people. <laughs> Clearly, you know, one of them. Bye. <laughs> Next, right? I mean... Don't get me wrong, it's all, I'm looking for the right people, right? If a, if a person is, a, because there's so many people who want to get the thousand pounds, but guess what they want to do? Nothing. Nothing. They want to sit on their ass for three months and get a thousand pounds. Right? I go, hey, it ain't going to work. It's not, it's not one of those, right? You're going to have to put in some work, right? But this is the type of post. Now, is this the only way to post something? Of course not. It's just the one that I did and it worked, right? And you can word it and reword it in your own way. But basically, you want to attract them and you want to put something in there that will catch their attention. You know, one of these things that what it has here, it has a certain timeline, right? Because there's too much of the stuff out there, oh, join this, make millions, right? I mean, people go, yeah, whatever, right? This is quite precise. It says a thousand pounds by the end of October. So this is like, mm, you know, I'm actually curious. I would like to do it in three months time, etc. The other thing, you know, is, is the actual work. It says few hours a day, etc. So when a person sees that, they start realizing, okay, this is not going to be one of those Ponzi pyramid money investing schemes where I put a thousand and then maybe I'll get a thousand back in three months time. Here it's going to be work. It's not going to be money that I'm putting in, right? Because there's too much of that out there. So it's just one of those posts where you can do a million of different ways of doing it, right? Okay. So now let's say somebody responds to you. What do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> so the mother texted me a few days ago. She goes, I posted your post and now people started responding to me. You know, what do I send to them? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is the first step and, and that's why there's so many moving parts. And sometimes we do the right post, but then we don't know what to respond to these people. Or sometimes we we'll put the wrong post and we don't get any response. And there's just so many different things. So the next bit is what do you message these people, right? So once they message you, uh, you have to have some sort of uh, 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 a formula that you're going to message them. Now this one in particular is actually where you're reaching out to them first, right? So the, I'll, I'll show you the one that I send them once they reached out to me, but first we're going to cover the one if you're reaching out to them, right? So this formula, this is the formula, right? So it, has, it says, hey, first name, right? Now why would you put their first name? Obviously. 
And they know it's not spam. You know, you haven't just sent this message to 10,000 people in one go, which says, hi, blah, 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 right? Because they know that, I mean, you haven't even bothered to put my first name in there. Clearly, you sent it to 10,000 people, right? So you put their first name. Second thing, it says enticing first sentence. I'll show you what the enticing first sentence is. Why you are messaging them, connection point or excitement, and a question, right? So I'll show you how it would look, right? So you'd say something like that. Hi Bob, I almost didn't reach out to you, but then I decided to anyways. I swear I'm not a random FB person with a spammy message, haha. -ha. I've been noticing the comments you've made on Tony Robbins' page, and I've checked your profile. We definitely have the same mindset uh, like when you uh, posted about work ethic. So I thought I should, we should connect. Great chat with you. What exactly do you do for work? Now this is a big message, and there's quite a lot of stuff in it, isn't it? Now straight away, this should give you an idea. What sort of idea does this give you? Anybody? Does this give you an idea where to look for people? Where to look for people? Tony Robbins page, right? I mean, what? it's not just Tony Robbins page, right? But you're looking for what sort of person to join your team? Negative, pessimistic, uh, you know, doomsday person? No, you're looking for positive, excited, motivated people, right? So start thinking, where do these people hang out? What sort of people do they like? Is Tony Robbins one of those people who attracts a lot of positive, motivated people? Yeah? So if you go... <laughs> so if you go on Tony Robbins' page and you see people who comment there or who interact with you, those people might be a positive person, right? And you might actually message them. Or you join a group that is personal development group or whatnot group, right? Or you whatever, right? So these are the type of people. The other thing here, it shows that you paid a bit of interest to them, right? You looked at their page, maybe you saw a post. So one of the things I like to do is when I scan through my feed on Facebook, if I see something really cool or really positive or really motivational shared by somebody from my Facebook friends, and I know for sure they're not in FM, I'll like them post, I'll comment on it, and maybe I'll even message them. I'll go, hey Ian, really cool post, you know, I really got excited. You know, we haven't connected for a while, I can see I had you as a friend since 2015. What do you do for a living, right? And Ian might respond to me, hey, you know, yeah, I really like that post, you know, I'm an architect, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, right? But you start the conversation with people. Guess what? Like in the real world, right? <laughs> we need to start conversations to people and, and talk to them, right? And the last question is the most important one. What exactly do you do for work? Right? Why would you ask that? Why would you ask what do they do for work? It's a conversation builder, but also it can lead to you showing them the business. Because you ask what you do. Yeah, exactly. So first, whatever, if they say something, they might say something that you can use. If they say, hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom, you know, I've got four kids. Cool. You know, do you, I mean, would you be interested in earning extra income, you know, while being a stay-at-home mom? Right? Or somebody who goes, oh, actually, I'm in between jobs right now, you know, I'm actually looking for something better. Hmm, great, right? Or, worst case scenario, if they in a job and they love it, guess what they're going to ask you probably? They say, what? Do you do for a living, right? And it gives you an opportunity to go, hey, let me tell you what I do for a living, right? And I'm even going to give you a phrase to tell them when they ask you what you do for a living, right? So that's the sort of formula. Again, you don't need to use it exactly word for word, but you can do. Now, there's three leading questions that I really, really like to use. The first leading question is, what do you do for work? This is one of the best questions, and it works internationally, right? I use it for English speakers, I use it for Lithuanian speakers, I use it for people in Africa, it doesn't really matter. In this question works a treat. What do you do for a living, right? Because it's not intrusive, but it also gets a lot of information about that person. Because just by then telling me what they do for a living, I can get a whole picture, can I? If I say, what do you do for a living, and that person says, I'm a student right now. Do I get a picture who this person is? Very quickly, I can sort of think, oh, this person is from on this shelf, right? If I message a person, I go, what do you do for a living? And they go, I'm a medical doctor. Do, do I get a certain picture about who this person is? Straight away, right? So asking who did they, uh, do, what do they do for a living is a great question. The next question that I really, really like is how long you've been doing that, 
right? So if I ask a, a, a person, you know, what do you do for a living? And they say, I'm an accountant. And I go, so how long have you been doing that? And they go, six months, right? So they haven't been doing it for a very long time, right? Then I can go, oh, what did you do before? Or, you know, have you, you just spoke? Or, or if they say, I've been doing it for 15 years, then I'll go, oh, you must love it, huh? Right? Or, you know, have you ever thought of doing something else? You know, so when somebody, if somebody has got a job, I don't know, um, not to say that any jobs are bad, but somebody says, I'm a waiter, right? Now, a waiter is not a bad job. Uh, stealing is bad. Any job is good, right? But let's say somebody is a waiter, right? And I say, well, how long have you been doing that? And they go, I've been doing it for eight years. And I'll go, oh, wow, you must love it, huh? Guess what they're going to respond? <laughs> Very few will go, oh yes, I love carrying glasses and plates of food all day long, etc. Most people will go, no, nah, not really, you know, but I'm, you know, it's just I'm doing this to pay the bills, etc. Right? So it really gives me um, an idea. However, if I ask somebody, what do you do for a living? And they go, I'm an architect. Right? If I ask them, do you, do you really like that? Right? They're probably going to say, yes. yeah, I do. Right? I don't want them to say that. <laughs> Instead, then I'm going to say, have you ever thought of doing something else? And they'll go, what do you mean? Right? I'll, I'll pick their interests. Right? I'll, I'll make them curious. Right? So it's again, you judge every situation individually. Right? You don't just do a blanket thing to every single person. Same way. Right? Okay. Also, some people really, uh, to be honest, it's not necessary to get the person's phone number, but if you really want it, you know, there are some things that you can do to get the phone number slightly easier, right? But to be honest, we don't need that anymore because we can send all the information to the person via Facebook. I mean, we can attach files, send pictures, do all the text, etc. So there's almost no need for me to get the phone number until I'm registering them. And when I'm registering them, I'm going to need everything. The address, the date of birth and everything. So getting the phone number is not that important. But if you need it, there are certain ways like, here's my phone number in case you have any questions. This is obviously by the end of the conversation once you've given them all the information, right? You go, this is my phone number in case you have any questions. What's yours so I know who's calling me because I don't pick up, you know, unknown numbers or whatever. The other one is, uh, hey, my number is uh, so, uh, you, here's my number so you can text me your questions and what's yours so I can text you the information, whatever. But it's really not necessary, to be honest with you, uh, to get the phone number nowadays unless it's like, whatever. Okay, so also, you know, so let's say now they texted you back, right? And they said, well, what do you do for, what do you do for a living, right? So one of the things I like to text them, or message them on Facebook, I say, I'm a recruiter for a person, a perfume and cosmetics company that is expanding in, and guess what I put at the end? Wow. Huh? Where they live, right? <laughs> so if they're in Kenya, I'll go, I'm a recruiter for a perfume and cosmetics company that is expanding in Kenya, right? If they're in Northampton, then my company is expanding in Northampton today, right? If they're in Luton, etc., right? So you'll put an area where they live, right? So this way they'll go, well, I'm in Northampton. What do you know, right? <laughs> Lucky me, right? So I just came across you, right? The other uh, thing that I like to write is I teach people how to build a part-time or full-time home-based business to earn extra income or even to replace the full-time income, right? It's a simple sort of text, but again, does this tell about my company, what my company name is? No, right? Does this have a link? No, it just gets them curious, right? Where well, they'll go, hmm, interesting, tell me more about that. And now they are asking me for the presentation instead of me shoving the presentation by force to them, right? It changes completely the way this communication happens with a person when they are actually dragging information out of you instead of you pushing the information onto them. You can't believe the way it changes, right? So you want to do that. You want to get them curious, right? And once they go, you know, also oh, what it is, oh, I'm curious or oh, I'm interested, then you can even ask them a question. If I send you a YouTube video link, about our company, about our products, and how you could earn with our company, would you be able to watch it? Right? So still I haven't sent them the link. I'm using if I, would you, right? Which is, again, it puts me in control, right? And guess what most people will say? Yeah, sure, please send it to me, <laughs> right? But it just changes the way. And then you send them. You send them the, the video link, or if you send them the brochure, or if you send them the, 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 the Word file, or whatever you use, right? You send them the information. So they watch. And even when I send them the video, I'll say, here's the link, you know, watch this video. And I'll say, once you watched it, get back to me 
and I'll show you how to get started. Right? So I give them an instruction. Right? Watch this, then get back to me. Now, will everybody get back to you? No. No. The fortune is in the follow-up, right? But some of them will. And it's a good test. Because if the person does get back to you, that means they are quiet eager, right? They're quite interested, right? They're quite curious, right? Like the, 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 the people that we have recruited this month uh, on Facebook, about 60 of them, they all got back to me, right? There's another probably 500 messages that I sent who didn't get back to me. <laughs> and if I wanted to, and probably I should do, and probably I will do, I'll go back to them and follow up with them. Hey, John, have you had a chance to watch the video, right? Because some of them, maybe the video didn't open, but they are lazy. They're not going to message you and say, hey John, sorry the video didn't work or did it, and they're like, ah, whatever, right? And they, you know, they're distracted with 10 million other things on television, right? So you want to go back to them because again, this might be some gems between those 300 or 400 people that I sent the message, isn't it? Right? So it's worthwhile to go back and follow up with them, etc. But again, it looks like work, right? <laughs> it doesn't look like I post a link on Facebook anymore and I recruit loads of people, right? It looks a bit like I'm going to have to put some work into this thing, right? Unfortunately, it is like that. Okay, any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, first one, so you, uh, then I got my personal page, yeah? Should be all the time my picture, my face, you know? Now, I wouldn't put the company logo or a, or a product picture on your no, no. profile picture. Um, it just, yeah, it doesn't look right. Yeah. Another question. Uh, then you recruit the person, yeah? And he sold the information. And then, you, then you recruit the massive, yeah? Sometimes you like the five people talking. But every single one wants like a personal messages. They don't want those copy and paste, you know what I mean? So what's the best way to do to not to show? Because but anyway, most of you have to... Because you can't do yeah, but to, to be honest, I, I've actually had this conversation with Rita, my brother, um, yesterday. And once you've spoken to 100, 200, 300 people on Facebook, you, you chatted to them, you realize that there's only a limited number of questions they can ask. Yeah. I actually, I have a file on my computer <laughs> which says Facebook file, right? And on that file, I have a load of different paragraphs, right? <laughs> And there's almost no question you can ask me that I haven't got a paragraph that I can copy paste <laughs> to you, right? So once you get, yeah, some people will, have, will ask a question like, you know, what's the fat content in your glow powder pearls, you know? And you'll go, no idea, I need to go back and, you know, figure this out, right? But it's very rare. Most people go, how much is it going to cost me to join, right? Or how do I start? Or is there any training? Or is there any local... On all of that, you can have on a copy-paste format, right? And where you can just, you know, I just actually did it by sort of trial and error. So even when I recruit a person, I send them a load of information right away, right? So I, 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 I figured that out by, again, by trial and error. Because I would send people information and they go, well, oh, what about that? I go, hmm, <laughs> if I have it once... No, but if I have two or three people saying, oh, what about that? I go, I need a paragraph for that. <laughs> because too many people are asking about that, so I just need to include it in my thing, right? And then you get to a point where almost they go, oh, there's about that. And, oh, oh, there's about that. They have no questions anymore because you've given them all the information they need, right? But you want questions because obviously if a person is thinking, they will have questions and they will ask for more information. But the major bit you can already have ready to message them, etc. And it makes your life so much easier. But yeah, it does take time. You can lose track. If you're chatting to seven people at the same time, you go, ooh, what did I tell them and what did I haven't tell them yet? You know, and, yeah. yeah, but it's, it's, it's like any other conversation, you know, with, with your friend, etc. You know, you just have to, you know, pay attention, talk to these people, etc. Yeah. Uh, another question. Uh, do you think it's uh, good to try to contact them? No, definitely, I mean, I'd recommend to have a, like a Skype call, you know, face to face so they can see your face, etc. For sure, because it's really, it's building relationship and everything. But it's just, again, you want to be efficient and, and, and see if, if that person has. Like Skype, for example, I'm really good on Skype. I have Skype, I know how to call Skype, I know how to share screen, etc. But if I ask in this room, how many of you every single day use a Skype account? One, two, three, four. 
right? Maybe five, right? So maybe five people use Skype, right? The rest of you probably haven't got Skype or you have it, but you haven't logged onto it for the last century, right? Except, so it's just, you want to see whether this is applicable and whether people actually use that. Except I love Skype or meeting people face to face. That's why, like now, it was like a first wave, if you like. We've recruited like 60 people this month, but now we're thinking, okay, how can we meet? Because some of those people are in Luch, which is easy peasy. We can meet up with them, show them some samples there. But some of those people are in Lithuania, you know, and different corners of Lithuania, right? So we're thinking, okay, where maybe this person, we can plug them in into the distributor center in Vilnius. Maybe this person, we can plug them into the meetings in Cholet. Maybe this person, we can, so they can meet a, a person. They can try some products, etc. Of course, you want that physical interaction because I believe that's how this business is built. But again, there are people who have built thousands and thousands of people organizations with, I mean, all on telephone and on internet, except because it's a limiting belief. If you believe that this person cannot succeed and, and unless they see my beautiful face and, and they touch me, then they're not going to succeed because that's your belief. Yeah. If you believe that I can recruit a person online, give them all the information and support online, and they can become successful, then they will. Because look at people, we have people, leaders who had no sponsors and they went on to become superstars, right? So it's really, it's, sometimes it's a limiting belief where, ah, oh, if I do it this way, it's not going to work out. It's just you think that it won't work out, but you don't know how that person is going to do it, right? Any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, now, by the way, these slides, you can download them from titaniumsuccess.co.uk slash social media. So if you go to titaniumsuccess.co.uk slash social media, you will be able to download all of these slides with all of those scripts, etc. Can you see that at the bottom there? Titanium success slash social media. Okay. Now, how many of you got value from this training today? How many of you learned something that you didn't know about Facebook today? Right? Okay, quite a few of you. However, because we're quite limited with time and resources, we couldn't have every one of you here with your laptops, etc., actually physically implementing most of this stuff, it's quite difficult sometimes because I know that not everybody is equally technologically advanced or whatever, right? Some people go, well, I, you know, this sounds interesting, but I wouldn't have a clue how to actually put this into practice. So I figured out um, a, a, a way to do, to do it a little bit better. So I want to run a training, I, I will run a training called Social Media Mastery. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a group of people to bring their own laptops and to sit down with me and actually follow step by step how to create the Facebook account, how to update your profile, how to do this, how to upload videos, how to download video from a YouTube and how to put it onto Facebook and things like that. So basically physically taking people step by step through the process, right? Where they have their own laptops with them and basically they can follow me off the screen. I can come around them, say, ah, you clicked here wrong, go back here, except to show them really how this thing works, right? So what will, what will you learn there? So there's some things I want to share on that training, things like how to create a Facebook account and how to create extra Facebook accounts and why obviously you should do it and why it's important. One of the reasons, for example, if you're going to paste on a lot of groups, like I said, on your one Facebook account, you can only paste to about 30 to 50 groups a day. If you, I mean, people who are big on social media, they post to about 150 groups a day, which means you're going to have to have, have about three or four working accounts on Facebook to do that, right? Uh, how to create a Facebook page, you know, how to optimize it so that it does what it's supposed to be doing, right? How to get likes on, and followers for your Facebook page, right? Introduction to Facebook advertising. Now, this is, again, a whole science on itself, but I will show on this training how to set up your Facebook ad account and how you can use five quid, you know, just to see how the Facebook advertising works, how you can boost a post, how you can advertise your page to get more likes and things like that. You know, how to join Facebook groups and how to find those groups online. Because again, there's different ways how you can find groups that, you know, within your local area, nationally, internationally and things like that. How to post on Facebook groups uh, uh, to have the most response from people, right? Um, how to increase Facebook group post visibility and engagement. So we already touched on that today a little bit, you know. How to communicate with Facebook leads, like scripts, you know, the, the stuff I mentioned to you, the copy-paste stuff, I'll go through with you so this way you can see all of those copy-paste uh, 
stuff and you can even save those files onto your laptops so you can use it too when people respond to you you can go copy paste copy paste so this way you know you can communicate with them how to create professional looking attractive images right uh, how many of you heard of canva okay few of you heard of Canva, right Canva is a free resource and you can really do nice pictures on there again when i first started using Canva, it was a bit wobbly i was like all over the place so again on this training i'll show you how to use Canva and how to quickly create images and then later you can use them as templates you know you just edit few things and use the same sort of uh, templates you know how to upload various images on on your facebook profile and pages how to create videos on your phone uh, how to screen capture videos on your computer have anybody in here used Camtasia before yeah, you use Camtasia. Camtasia is a screen capture uh, software that you can use to record the screen. Uh, like, you know, if you want to show your team member how to uh, register somebody online. The easiest way to do it, start Camtasia, go on your computer, do the whole thing, and send them the video, right? Really easy to use, but I didn't know about Camtasia before I started doing this sort of stuff. So, again, I'll show you where to get it, how to get it, etc. How to upload video on your Facebook profile and pages. How to... Uh, do Facebook Live on your personal page and on, uh, on your Facebook page. How to download videos from YouTube and upload them onto Facebook. Who in the room knows how to download the video from YouTube onto your computer? Okay, so we have about three, four, five people, right? So again, I'll show you on the training how to download the videos from YouTube. So even if it's not your video, you can go on YouTube, grab the link, download that video onto your computer and then upload it onto your Facebook as your video. Now there's a few things there with copyrights etc but I'll explain. Um, and how to create Facebook group by yourself so you can create groups as well and to maximize its engagement. Okay. And is that it? Okay. And some bonus stuff. You know, so I also want to very briefly uh, touch upon on that training on WhatsApp. Why use it and why it's important. Who in here uses WhatsApp? Nearly everybody, right? So I'll show you how to use WhatsApp, how to create WhatsApp groups how to do WhatsApp broadcasts, how to share video on, on WhatsApp, etc. How many of you know how long the video can be on WhatsApp? One person? Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes, yeah, up to three minutes. Otherwise, it won't allow you to, to share. Okay, number two, uh, I'll do a brief introduction to Instagram. Again, I'm, by no means I'm an expert of WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram, but it's just I'm going to share you the stuff that I know that maybe you don't know, that you can use, etc. Right? And number three, I'm going to show, give you a brief introduction to Snapchat. Who's on Snapchat? Yeah. Well, a few people, right? It's going to be huge, but just not yet. But, but you want to get on it, right? It will be huge, I promise you. <laughs> okay, so this training, so details. When? We're going to do it in two weeks' time, 11th of, Sunday, the 11th of September, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? So it's going to be about six hours. We're going to have a few breaks in there, etc. Um, it's going to be in where it's going to be in our home so it's going to be very informal environment because I want to make sure that the Wi-Fi is good <laughs> and in our home we have a fairly good Wi-Fi you know so this, so this way we can have a, a good connection etc and we have like a hundred megabyte per second you know so hopefully 20 laptops or so will be okay and uh, cost is 30 pounds per person right so this is for the whole day's training etc or we might even include some lunch <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a really good chef, I promise you. Okay, there's about 20 places available. And that's actually about how many people we can fit in our house, <laughs> right? So, so if we get about 20 people with the laptops, etc., we should be able to be sitting there comfortably, etc., and, um, and using our stuff. Payment details, uh, you can either PayPal me or transfer the money to my bank. Uh, the transfer reserves your ticket. so. Uh, the training is in about two weeks, so you know you can reserve your tickets whenever you are, or if you want today you can pay cash. Yeah. Um, are you seeing how that one goes to see whether you can do that again? At the moment this is the first time we ever run this thing, you know. So we'll run this thing, we'll see what's you know, whether people will find it useful, whether they'll find it practical etc. and then maybe we'll run another one again. You know, so, yeah. But absolutely but at the moment this is the one we're running. And again, the site you've written down, titaniumsuccess.co.uk slash social media, all these details are on there too, right? All the payment details and everything, etc. And this slides as well, right? Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you very much.